Hey guys and girls, I'm James and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new just released Holy Stone 700E, which is not to be confused with the 700D that came out in 2018. Um, if you look, they're very similar, but this is a much upgraded version. It's smaller, lighter, has a better camera, optical flow sensors. We'll go over all the features of this in a little bit and why I think this is such a good little drone because this one has a special place in my heart. Um, this is the second drone I ever bought. The first one I smashed it into my neighbor's Suburban and then the first two times I flew this, I had to climb a tree to get it out. Uh, the third time I flew it, uh, this is me flying it. Actually, the fourth time, yes, I hooked a fishing pole to it and I had to reel it in with the fishing pole because I didn't want it to fly away because I was stubborn. I didn't want to read the manual. I didn't want to get on YouTube and learn how to fly it. I figured I could figure it out without hooking up to Wi-Fi and I didn't know what I was doing and so. So the third drone I bought was the 720E which is this foldable version of the 700E and these have a lot of similarities and I'll do a comparison of these two drones in a later video but today it's all about the 700E. Uh, but after I bought this one, this really taught me how to learn how to fly a drone and I was able to start using them in my roofing company and since then I bought many other drones, uh, learned how to fly them, got my part 107 certificate from the FAA. And uh, So if you're thinking about getting this for your first drone, don't. Make this your second drone. This is a really good uh, low budget drone. It has a lot of good features. Uh, make this your first drone. This is the Holy Stone HS210, the best beginner mini drone on the market, bar none. And let me explain why is because both of these sit on a four axis. So they'll both pitch forward and back. They'll roll left and right. They'll yaw left and right and they'll go up and down. So if you learn how to fly the HS210 with its controllers and these move all around, well, it's the same way that you're going to get when you fly this 700E for the first time. You're going to feel much more comfortable because you're going to know the orientation of the drone. So, so many people do all the research on the internet and decide which drone they want. But when they take it out and fly it, they come home with something like this. Well guys, this is what you don't want to do. So that's why it's important to learn the orientation of a drone before you put it in the air for the safety of others and yourself and your drone. So before we fly it, uh, let's go over some of the features it has. And guys, look at this great case. Um, it does fit in there, but of course you're gonna have to take the props off every time. So it holds the drone and it holds two batteries and the remote in a case for your wires. It's really deep. So it looks like you could actually drop it or something like that without damaging the drone and it's got a place up here for your extra wires and props. So inside the bag, of course, you'll have the drone, the remote, an extra set of props, a handy dandy screwdriver. Um, actually, I like the way these legs are attached much better because they're screwed in all four places. In the old 700, the, uh, it, they kind of pinched on on one side with one screw and those, but this one's not, so it has four props. And let's look at these props. They're actually spring-loaded. I've never seen this before. So there's a spring on here, and you actually, so you push it down and twist it, which is the first I've ever seen, not only with Holy Stone, but with any other drone that it actually has a spring inside, so you know that there's no chance of it. Or the old one, you used a wrench and you spun it on to get it tight. Um, let's talk about this battery. So it comes with two batteries. The, the Holy Stone 700 came with one. This is an intelligent battery, guys. This thing's amazing. I love it. So you plug it in, it's type C. This goes into your wall connector. Gone are the days of the big old chargers that you gotta get out and hook up all your wires to the, to the battery. All you need to charge it now is this because it's an intelligent battery. It says it takes five hours to charge. I'm not sure if it really takes that long. That seems like a long time. It says 20 minutes of flight time. If I get 12 to 14, I'd be really happy. So the original 700 weighed in at 586 and the 700E comes in, comes in at 543. So it is a little bit lighter, which puts it uh, right in line with like the Roku F11 is 542 or the Air 2 is it 562. So at, what was it? 542 grams, that puts it right in line as a little bit more than one adult beverage. So let's go over some of the features. Uh, gone are the little holes on the side of the 700s where you can put the prop guards. I'm sure someone will come out with the aftermarket prop guard that'll have braces on it and stuff. Uh, like we talked, it's got the intelligent battery, which is a big plus. This one has altitude hold sensors right here. Uh, the old one didn't. It did have the GPS, but there's no sensors. This one has the sensors, so I'm sure it's gonna be much more stable in low flight. It's gonna know where it is, where it's to the ground. Gone is the wire that was right here that used to you know, get caught up on stuff. So now it's wired directly into it. 
it still has you know this bounciness to it the, the little sponges it kind of reminds me a lot of the typhoon h and so it still has the one axis gimbal where it goes up and down which is controlled by the side of the remote and you may say man i wish it had a three axis gimbal well guys look at the price point of this it's a uh, 299 dollars with the 4k camera and you know what the number one thing that breaks on cameras <laughs> camera drones that are on a three axis gimbal look at the way this air 2 is suspended out that's the number one thing that, that it's so easy to break these. I mean, my son just broke his just putting it in the bag because the gimbal cover came off. So if you look at this, I mean, the price to repair this gimbal is twice as much as this drone cost. So see how this is really exposed when you're flying. So if you're a new flyer and you're flying a, a camera drone like this with this three axis gimbal, it's pretty easy to damage this. So let's go over the remote. There's nothing on the back. Uh, unless you can unfold these holders right here which make it really nice to hold your antennas go up first time you turn it on you want to press the lock button and slide it over this lock button will unlock the props this is your takeoff button this will not work unless you unlock the props also this will lock the props uh, if you're flying towards a pond and you think you're gonna lose control you push this button and it'll fall out of the sky <laughs> So this is your takeoff button. This is your return to home button. Uh, you can go into the settings on your app and we'll go over that in a minute and show you how um, you can set the, the height and everything of how, how high you want it to come back. This is your camera and video button. One press takes a picture. One long press starts a video. This wheel doesn't do anything, but this one will over this one, This wheel right here moves your gimbal up and down when you're flying. Um, right here, you know it's connected because you see the battery for the quadcopter and this is the battery for your remote. This is your distance of how far it is away from you. I think 300 meters or 900 feet is about the most this is gonna go. This is your height and legally you can't go higher than 400 feet anyway. This shows your GPS is on. There's a GPS switch right here that you can turn it on and off. I don't know why you would ever want this off. Make sure your GPS is always on. Stay in mode two. And then see how it says hi? Well, this button right here, it's gonna, if you press it, it'll go into low and that's for cinematic mode. The inputs of the controllers will make the drone move very slow, which is good for filming or beginner. Um, but you want it, if it's windy outside or anything like that, you hear those two beeps, that'll put it back into high. That's what it'll show right there. Mode two is the US, that's the control stick. So you gotta go into the, uh, the settings to change that. And you don't wanna do that. I forgot to mention that your uh, SD card slides in right there. You kind of pop it in like normal and you pop it again to pop it out. Don't forget you're gonna to have to register it with the FAA. I usually put my sticker right here. I can print it out and put it right there or you could even take a marks a lot and mark it on there. Right here, this is where you're gonna put your phone. This pulls up and this pulls down. The farther you pull it up, then it'll tilt forward and backwards. I'm gonna fly it with my phone but I'm just gonna show you how to operate the app from my iPad. So once it's on, you wanna to go to your settings and you have your remote on and you're gonna to go to Wi-Fi and you're gonna look for Holy Stone. It'll pop up right here. Once you see the check mark, then you know you've connected to the Wi-Fi. So then you're gonna open up the app and it's this Ophelio Go. You'll see a 4K right there. And it wants to connect. So right now you see it's connected. That's why we, you spin it around and the camera, it's showing inside here. So. Right here it says weak GPS signal. That'll go up because uh, we, we don't have any satellites. That'll show it. That shows the again, just as on the remote, that shows the battery for the quadcopter and then the battery for the remote and then your signal strength. Um, you go into settings and you can, this is where you, it's in beginner mode for default. We want to take it out of that. We want to go imperial for us and then um, your orbits. Hey guys, quick break in here. Uh, this orbital uh, semi diameter. Uh, when I got this drone, it's set to 16 meters. Well, when it went away from me 16 meters, it would not yaw until I changed this. And you can't change it without changing your max distance. So max out your max distance in your orbital centimeter. If you go to beginner mode, uh, it will go back to 16. So when it goes away from you, it would not yaw. I never had that problem with my 720E. And maybe it's just this drone or maybe it's preset that way. And they just don't talk about it because it doesn't say anything about it in the instruction manual. So if you get one thing out of this, when you get your drone, if it goes away from you after 16 meters and it will not yaw, you're going to need to change that into in the settings. Um, 
Another thing too, is Holy Stone sends me these drones, but this is totally my review. They have no input. I really appreciate them sending them to me and trusting me to review it, but I want to be honest and I want to talk about if there is any issues. And like I said, I don't know if it's an issue. Please leave a comment if yours does the same thing. Another thing too is always put your phone in Wi-Fi drones into airplane mode. It's using the Wi-Fi from your phone, not from your house. And that stops a lot of outside interference. Um, I read about a lot of flyaways with Wi-Fi drones and I think it's because a lot of it has to do with that outside interference. So airplane mode, uh, it also stops your girlfriend from texting you or calling you while you're in the middle of flying and you're losing concentration. But that'll help stop the outside interference. Back to the review. When you go into orbit mode, that's when it spins around something. That's how big of a circle you want it to make right here. So we'll set that about, about 40 feet. Max distance, is set, right now it's set at 49. We probably want to bring that up to uh, 1200, 1300. Max altitude, it's set at 49. We want to go maybe 260. Return to home altitude, this is really important. This is a, if you got trees around you that are more than 49 feet high, it's going to smash into them on the way back. So I would say to go to at least to 90 feet. And see it says right here, return altitude cannot be higher than flying height. So our flying height altitude is 261 or our return is at 90. So underneath here is your camera settings. Right here it's picture and video. Hit your camera settings with this button right down here. You set your brighting, your saturation, your effect, and your grayscales. I'm not going to go into all that. Uh, leave auto on your ISOs and you can change your white balance. Uh, go up here to camera and you can set 1080p or 4k and your catch frame rate and then it shows you how much storage you have and it'll be stored to the video card right here is your map and it'll 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 show you from where the drone is and how far it is away from you so if you're here that's that blue light and as the drone flies away it'll follow away and it'll have an arrow that points back toward you toward you here's your waypoints that's where if you attach that and you can draw on the map where you want it to fly to. And we'll go over that. There's a couple other, there's a couple other options we can go over to the follow me in the circle. And we'll do that when we're flying. Let's go get her in the air. There we go. Then hit the take off button. Man, look at her hover. She's hovering really, really good. Really pretty picture. Just spin it around. Move the gimbal down, you can see it. And do a picture in picture. Move the gimbal back up. That's a pretty good camera. Also, you see we're connected to 17 satellites. That's really, really important. All right. Oops. Take her out. She's holding altitude really, really good. Look at that. That's with 16 satellites. All right, let's take her up. Too many golfers over there. We better come back. <laughs> I'm not going to spend a long time flying. It flies just like the 720. Man, this thing's handling really, really good. So now we're going to do circle. I'm going to put up just a little bit. 
And we go over here to right here to these three little boxes and you see the follow me orbit mode and headless mode don't don't ever use headless mode we'll go over to that so we're going to go to follow me we'll swipe to the right enough of that buzzing noise all right guys this is in 1080p um, i can change it to 4k i think i'll do that when i'm comparing it to the 720 in a comparison video this is just fine i mean with the one axis gimbal drone you're really not going to be looking for the fantastic cinematic shot that you'd want to use in a commercial but uh great lots of fun to have for under 300 dollars. the camera and even in 1080p is really really good i'm really impressed um, so i fly around here at the house and then i head out to the park to try to get some uh, better footage of uh, for flying farther away and looking around. And uh, one thing that did happen is when it got low to the battery, I was really kind of shocked. My goodness, it wouldn't turn around and come back uh, with the controls. But once I, cause I think I lost signal, uh, which is possible because I was like two, almost 300, 400 feet away. And, but once I hit return to home, she came right back and was gonna land right there on top of my truck. But I took back control of it and handled it. And every time I fly this drone, I think I like it more and more. It's hard to fly a $2,000 drone all day, every day for work, doing roofing inspections, and then try to uh, fly a $300 drone. It's kind of got a little bit of quirkiness to it. But um, once I flew it like five or six times in a row and forget about the aspects of the other drones, I really enjoy it. Um, the camera's really good. It responds very well. It's not real fast. Um, it's definitely not as fast as the 720E. I always thought the Phantom 4 was a better a flyer than the Mavics because it is a wider body and more uh, stable stance kind of like that's how this is the 700s over the 720s uh, folding drones because this one has a bigger body and it just seems to fly more stable uh, easier to fly definitely than the 720s it doesn't seem to uh, move around as much or it I, it never told it bold on me once I had that happen a couple times on the 720 and I'm sure that's because I was in an airplane mode like I talked about before uh, airplane mode is really important on these so I'm a couple I'm about 150 feet high here and then uh, and right here I think this is where I start to lose it I really do this is where it won't turn around but I hit return to home and um, all right well this is the end of the flying part so thanks so much for watching my review of the Holystone 700D. If you've got some good information on this, please like and subscribe. Um, without subscribers, this channel would fail. Um, so this drone packs a lot of punch for $300 with the two intelligent batteries. Uh, it flies really well. You know, if you're flying a drone that costs five times as much, of course this is, isn't going to handle like this. But for the value, this is really good. Is it a better value than the 720E? I don't know. I'll have to compare these two in the next video. So be sure and subscribe and watch for that. Also, I'll be comparing the, the, the DJI Mini to the Holystone new version of a much lower budget drone of the HS-175. And I've flown both of these and I'm really impressed. Um, you'll have to wait and see on that one too. So be sure and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.